Hmm, so here's my situation. I ran out of lotion. I could run to the store and go get some, but wouldn't it be nice if I could make a fresh batch of lotion the way I do a cup of coffee? I could whip up a batch on the spot and make just the amount I need. Plus, I could heat it, so it'd be all nice and warm. A single serving of lotion could have the scents and oils customized according to my preference. And if it didn't need a long shelf life like commercial lotions, I might even get away without using preservatives. That would be cool, right? So the problem? Nothing like that exists. So I think my science goal for today is going to be to prototype an automated lotion maker. Now my tool set really isn't up to the task, but fortunately I know a place that has everything an aspiring inventor needs to go from dreaming about a project to actually making it. If I think I'm going to make an automated lotion dispenser, then I better start by making lotion, right? Lotion is mostly water and oil. And as you know from your salad dressing, they don't like to mix. This is because water is polar, meaning the molecule has a slight positive charge on one side and a slight negative charge on the other. Oil is mostly nonpolar, meaning it shares its electrons a little more evenly. To get them to combine, we're going to need to use an emulsifier. An emulsifier will grab polar water on one side and mostly nonpolar oil on the other and allow them to combine when mixed. The result is an emulsion. Do you want to know what else is an emulsion? Mayonnaise. The emulsifier is the lecithin and the egg yolk. Okay, let's measure out the ingredients. Speaking of mixing, we're going to need to use a little force. This is where I give a shout out to my cousin Dave. Dave, I borrowed the motor from your RC car this morning. It'll be back by noon and it went to a good cause. Anyway, now I need to figure out how to get the ingredients to the motor. And to do that, we're going to need this silicone tubing. Got a whole bunch of it here. And some pumps. This is a peristaltic pump and it's really cool because it works a lot like your digestive tract. Inside are these rotating mechanical rollers that squeeze a section of the tube. When they rotate, the liquid inside the tubing gets propelled forward. The muscles in your digestive system contract in sequence to form a ripple known as the peristaltic wave. This wave pushes for down the intestine and out the poop chute in much the same way. Just saying. Also, I said I wanted to heat the lotion, and for that, we're going to use this Peltier heater. This tile has two sides, and when DC electricity flows through it, heat travels from one side to the other. So you can heat something up or cool something off depending on what side you use. Because I said I wanted to have a warm lotion, we're going to use the heated side. And we're going to want to avoid lawsuits and not burn anyone. So for that, we're going to use this temperature controller. And I could take this silicone tubing and coil it up, and you can see that I've just made a makeshift way to warm the liquid inside. <laughs> now we just need some wire to make the electric circuits. A basic electric circuit has electrons flow from a power source through a conductor to a load, which will convert electricity to light, heat, or mechanical motion, like this pump. Let's wire it up. Great, we have all the wiring and the parts, but we don't want all the pumping, the mixing, and the heating going on at the same time. They need to happen as a series of events. We're going to use a mini computer to control this relay, which will permit or disrupt the flow of electricity so we can turn the parts on or off as we need them. Raspberry Pi sounds delicious when you're hungry, until you find out it's just a mini computer. It doesn't taste very good, but you can use it to do some really cool things. You can build a camera with it, do robotics, run code, or create electronic projects like the one you see here. All right, all you Herptology fans, Python is a snake and a programming language. Who names this stuff? We'll be coding instructions to cue the different relay switches, telling the devices the order and the time they have to run in. I think 
we're ready to press go, but before I hit the button, I want to thank Google's Maker and Science Initiative for providing the funds to make this awesome video possible. Ready? Here we go! So the water is coming out of the container and it's being pumped into a chamber that has the motor. Ah, pump two just kicked off. All the oil-based ingredients are now being pumped through the silicone tubing where the motor's at. And there it goes, the motor just kicked off. Uh, I can adjust the dimmer so that it goes faster. Aw, it sounds like Wayne Kitty's purr. The motor is mixing the water and oil so that we get an emulsion, we actually get lotion. Now we go from the motor to our heater. We have the silicone tubing coiled on top of the Peltier heater and the heater is gonna heat the lotion until it gets all nice and warm. Here it comes, here it comes, wait for it, oh yeah. And we now have homemade lotion. You want some? Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Now I hadn't touched electronics before doing this project, but that's the great thing about science. Anyone can do it. It's not limited to scientists or engineers. All you need is an open mind and a willingness to explore. My science goal for today was to prototype an automated lotion maker, but perhaps you're inspired by something else. So tell me, what's your hashtag science goals? And then go out and do it. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching me tinker, hit that like button and consider subscribing. If your insatiable appetite for science demands more, then I've got great news. All these other amazing YouTubers and Google's Making and Science playlists have videos for you to enjoy too. Check them out.